still love the facility. Obviously, it's it's fairly fairly comfortable and it's free parking. So, um, <laughs> and you're not you know circling around downtown looking for some place to park. So, um, I'm just going to give you some housekeeping tips uh, real quickly here as um, people find their seats. Um, first of all. Um, once we move past this screen, you'll find that um, the, the grants pages actually don't project very well. So if you're sitting towards the back and you really want to see, you might want to move to the front. However, in your packet, what you'll find is um, you actually have blank screenshots that you can take notes on. So you can follow along that way. Um, some of the presenter, I mean, we'll let you know what page we're on if you get lost, or raise your hand and let us know that you're lost um, in trying to keep track of where we're at in the presentation. Um, I think everybody heard my, my introductory spiel, but I'll do it one more time in case you didn't. Um, bathrooms are out the door, down the hall, around the corner to the left. There's a cafeteria, and if you uh, would like something to drink, feel free to bring it back in here. Um, sit close. Um, we talked about what was in the packet. Um, the other thing that you'll find in the packet is a little half sheet of paper. Um, we would like to be able to take every single question that you possibly have today. We would like you to write that down so that we can take it back to the office and develop a comprehensive um, FAQ page to post on the website to go along with all the rest of the grant resource material. So, Keep that in mind as we go, as the presenters go through the presentation. Write your questions down. Give us as much information as you can. At the end of the, hold all your questions uh, till the end of the presentation, and then we will have obviously an open question and answer period also. But we still would like them in writing. Um, we are going to do an overview of the system today. And your primary contact for this year for your questions regarding um, your grant specific information will be, needs to be directed to your project leads. The help desk at Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services should only be utilized for actual technical issues with the system. In other words, you can't log in you get system errors, the system crashes for some reason. Those are the type of issues that need to go to our help desk. Otherwise, all of your other questions need to be, again, directed to your project leads. If you don't know who your project lead is for some reason, the, um, the GIFA and the allocation pages and all of that his normal historical type of process is, um, will be posted on the website and you can find your project lead on those sheets. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim Lapsinski. And welcome, and we hope that you find this helpful today. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jim Lapsinski, and I'm one of the assistant directors at the department. And I'm here to talk a little bit about what the grant and funding management system is. Um, or GFMS. I was told this morning that I'm not allowed to call it GIFMS anymore. So I, I, I need to call it GM, GFMS. So I'm going to stutter through that for the next five minutes. So, um, And actually, before I get to that, I want to thank um, Beth Ferguson and, and Matt Lankark for our, from our office who actually coordinated these trainings. Uh, they took it upon it, um, themselves as part of a lean project. Um, to, to coordinate the trainings for the grant system, and we, we really appreciate their work on that. So um, the GF, GFMS system, I told you I wasn't going to be able to do this, um, it's developed, it was developed by our department, and it represents a quality improvement partnership consolidating um, legacy Department of Mental Health systems and ODATA systems. and. Um, to spread and support our stakeholders, customers, as an effective, innovative project and fiscal management tool. I do also want to mention that uh, this is the first project where the <coughs> department used agile soft software development, which is a, a process that where you, you really empower the staff uh, to create the system, and it, it really focuses on, on teamwork, and it was really a su successful project from that standpoint. Um, just a little bit about where we where the current system is and what we're moving to. Uh, this is kind of a nice visual. As you see, we have Olga, Pops, community funding, and the drawdowns. Um, there's a big X over a system called GINA, which never went into production. And then you have a somewhat 
uh, fragmented turnstile that's feeding into these systems. And the new system, you have it all consolidated into GF GFMS, um, which will communicate with OAKS. And there is a very sophisticated iPortal, which you'll learn a little bit, bit about um, in a couple of minutes. So um, I do want to mention that this, actually, let me, before I say that, let me get to this. Improvements of the new system uh, streamline a lot of our processes, faster response times, reduction of help desk tickets. Uh, reduction of application and technical support needs. I think that one of the biggest takes that I get from this system is that a lot of times you're, you're contacting our help desk to get some of your needs met or some questions answered. Uh, a lot of your pro pretty much through maintenance tabs, uh, your project leads can, can monitor a lot of that now. So it really should be a lot more user friendly for you all. I do want to mention that, that this system was designed um, for, to make it easier for us and f to make it easier on all of you uh, to, manage, to manage grants and funding. So um, if you hear something today, if, if you know, one of the new processes, it, it, it's, it's very concerning to you, um, you know, my commitment to you today is that we, we will work through any type of concerns like that. Um, I mean, there are some things, you know, if we've been audited on something and we have uh, an outstanding audit finding, no, we're not, we can't change that. But we, we do, we are committed to working with stakeholders um, in, in implementing that system. Um, kind of along that lines, in the allocation training yesterday, there were some concerns about one of the processes, one of the new, new processes specifically, um, cur currently in POPs, for allocation funding, providers apply to boards for that funding and they submit a budget and um, it's something that was actually required by SAMHSA and I think it's worked very well um, in POPs. And I think the thought with that um, in line with what's been requested from us from SAMHSA is to have that process flow the same way over treatment. And I think one of the things we realized quickly yesterday is that a lot of the treatment funding is a lot more complex than the prevention funding. So we are actually working through that right now and um, we'll, we'll let you all know as soon as we can how that's going to flow. So uh, that's all I have for today. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Tom Shell. Where's Tom? Oh, here he comes. He, he was our project manager for uh, this system, and he did a great job, and he's going to talk a little bit about the iPortal. Uh, thank you, Jim. As uh, Jim mentioned, my name is Thomas Shell. I am the project manager for the grant and funding management system and also for the iPortal. Uh, I'm also uh, I'm here to help you guys walk you through the registration process for using our new uh, single application login process, uh, which is called iPortal. Uh, iPortal is um, the link to get to our iPortal registration will be on our HioMoss website next to the GIFA, your grant information funding app or funding for our grant information for applicants. I knew I was going to get that right. Um, and the, uh, the, on that link where we find that in the Ohio Moss, the, the MHA at Ohio.gov website, there will be a link that says welcome to GFMS. When you click that, it will take you to this page here. There, as you see, it will be just a quick little welcoming message telling you what the system is and why we're doing, you know, what it's for. And it also has a link to our help desk as well in case you need to uh, remember that or need to know what the link or who your leads are. There's a link there. We also have, um, with this process, there's going to be two, two paths you can go through. There's going to be a new user registration. This is if you've never used any of our applications before. Uh, you would click here and it would take you to a user registration, and I'll click that in just a minute. Um, if you're an existing user, meaning you've used Olga and Pops before uh, and have done that, we've actually migrated your password, your user names and passwords and, and information over to the new system. So you would actually click here and it would take you to our login page here. Uh, and the only difference between this system and maybe the turnstile that you guys are familiar with is the user ID for you guys will be your email password that you guys registered with. Uh, if you need some help, we will gladly help you remember which one that is. 
Uh, but if, in case you forgot your password, we have a little uh, self-help button right here where you click this and then you just enter your password and an email will be sent to you, very similar to like Google or Yahoo or any of those types of things. For the uh, new users, when you click here, it'll take you to a, uh, sorry, a little bit of a timeout session. Uh, it'll take you to an external user registration form. Uh, in all of our systems, we have a red asterisk uh, for any of our required fields to help you guys know which information that we do need to gather. This red asterisk will be on also in the GFMS system, so it's consistent from all our systems. The, we are asking you for your title, your first name, your last name, uh, your email address, and as I said earlier, that's very important because that'll be your user login name. Your phone number, or your phone number, and also uh, we are asking what organization you guys belong to. Uh, this will be helpful in the GFMS system as that'll be your access for certain applications and, and going forward. We did migrate over 700, about 700 organizations. So please go ahead and search for your organization. You'll just click it and kind of click on which one it is. If you don't see it, it's not a problem. We actually will help you register, and you would just click. Click on this little button right here and click on Create Organization. And that will take you to another page right here where, again, the red asterisks will be requiring some fields uh, and we can register your organization with us. You only have to do this one time for all of our applications. So in case you have to do other things for other applications that we're not speaking of today. Uh, the name for your organization is going to be what you guys would like to be known as. And then the legal name because it's a little confusing, but that is actually what you registered with the state of Ohio to do business under. Um, your organization type, you can just go ahead and select a drop down that makes sense to you. And the federal tax ID number uh, your, or your EIN number. And just kind of going through that. And then we also have some uh, attributes here uh, that we would like to know a little more, more about your business. So family and children's first, if you're an organization for them, specialty dockets or your uh, board or, you know, recovery uh, entity. We have, a, we have three email or three addresses here, and they're kind of important, so I want to make sure we hit on these just a little bit. The entering of your entering of the address. This is your physical location of your, of your organization. A lot of you guys have some organizations where you're physically located, but your mailing may go to a P.O. box. We would like that in your mailing address. And if your billing address is different than all three of those, we would like those as well. But this would be what you guys entered, or what the address you have in Oaks. And that's going to be important for us for our payment processes. And you would go ahead and submit that. You would get an, a notification that just says that you're successfully registered. An email will be sent to the email account that you have. And then there will be a way for you guys to set up your passwords for the first time as well through, the, through a general email. And it will just ask you to enter your email. Um, I'm going to go ahead and log into our system really quickly using a uh, test account that we do have. Uh, once you guys enter the iPortal, it is going to be very similar to our applications, but it will tell you that you're in iPortal by the header right up here. That It will say Dashboard. All of our applications will have uh, similar information right here on the header. All of the applications that you're associated with will be under My Applications. You will click the My Applications and then continue to go on to whatever applications you do belong to. In the future, if you wanted to update your information, uh, as for an organization, you would go in and search for your organization and go ahead and edit the information. That would send us a notification that you guys have updated your information and we will validate that with, through a normal process. You can also do the same thing for your uh, user information as well. So we have the most up-to-date information for your guys' organization. All of our systems do have some notifications um, and you'll see that in our system, in the GFMS system as well. This is just kind of telling us uh, any outages that we may be having, letting you guys know as a communication for maybe doing maintenance or something like that. The system may be inaccessible. 
And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dan, our CFO. <coughs> I really don't know where to stand for the microphone, so <clears throat> if you can't hear me, let me know. Uh, again, my name is Dan Schreiber. I'm the uh, Chief Financial Officer for the department. <clears throat> and I am here mostly to re reiterate what Jim just talked about, so mostly waste your time, but also show a uh, – talk about a few different things in the, in the system. Um, <clears throat> Shemaine, Matt, and May, and Michelle will be actually going through the more detailed information. Um, <clears throat> so. Just kind of giving an overview, but uh, just wanted to let you guys know. So, as Jim said, the um, most important part about this project is that it is a consolidation of a lot of different pieces of information, a lot of different applications. Um, <clears throat> and while that's great for the department in terms of a stable system, um, great for some of you so you don't have to log into Olga one day and pops the other if, if you guys have different kinds of grants. <clears throat> um, it's good from a technology standpoint, but it's also good from a process standpoint. <clears throat> we tried to consolidate as much as possible. Um, the goal, which we have, will not quite get to, but basically the goal is any dollar that passes from the state <clears throat> down either to a board, provider, whatever, will be in the system and we will be able to see it all in, in one place. Um, so it will just be easier for, for a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> you know, you're going to talk about a little bit later, talk about a feature where in this system uh, you're actually going to be able to go go look and find your NOSA rather than, you know, scrubbing through your email or hoping you printed it out. So little things like that where <clears throat> we noticed that um, <clears throat> either there, those type of opportunities weren't available or you were sending one piece of information to our research and evaluation, one piece of information to the fiscal office, you had a third to your program lead. Um, as much as possible, we're trying to consolidate that into the system and uh, recognize that those business processes uh, could be a little bit streamlined. A um, <clears throat> few specific changes I did want to mention, broad-based ideas. Um, the first and most, I guess, <clears throat> one of the questions we've been getting a lot of is the system, when it goes live, is for fiscal 17 and forward. Um, <clears throat> so. We are not moving any fiscal 15, well, hopefully, hopefully there's no 15 still out there, but um, any fiscal 16 grants over into this new system. So if you have any reporting requirements, no, you will have reporting requirements, but to the extent you still have reporting to enter or if there were some no-cost extensions that <clears throat> still need to be drawn, those will be used, those will still be completed using the existing system. So everything 17 forward, though, will be in, I'm going to keep calling it GIFMIS because I don't have time for two extra syllables. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, <clears throat> a, um, one other opportunity we saw, you may have noticed on the web page, um, <clears throat> in addition to the GIFA this year, there was a second spreadsheet that we called allocation tart funding. And one, we need a better name for that, so if anybody has any suggestions. But the idea was there are certain things that the department funds, targeted things, um, <clears throat> quite often driven by the, the General Assembly, such as the Addiction Treatment Program, um, Family and Children First Councils, those type of things that are specific dollars allocated um, <clears throat> for a specific purpose, but they're not grants. They're not pass through of the federal dollars or that kind of thing. Um, so we want to track it, but it, very often we were kind of wedging into the system because we didn't know what else to do. Um, <clears throat> so there was a lot of not applicables entered in the system, that type of thing. So what we did was for some targeted programs, which, you know, we took a stab at the first list. We're looking for certainly some feedback and going forward. But certain programs we treated more like allocations. So they're still in the system, but they're just going to be direct funding. You're not going to have to pretend you have a NOM. You're not going to have to do those other things um, <clears throat> to get there. So that's, that's what that list is. Um, and then... <clears throat> Finally, um, the other major thing I kind of wanted to mention is we are going to – two things, actually. <clears throat> One, when I mentioned the consolidation, um, 
do want to point out that there's going to be, you're going to see a few new things in this system that you haven't done in prior years probably for grants. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, rather than, you know, pieces of information like DUNS numbers or IBHS numbers, that type of thing that haven't traditionally been in the grant process. However, <clears throat> almost all of these for someone in the room are, are pieces of information we collect. <clears throat> so, you know, rather than, again, searching our emails for did you send us your DUNS number, we just put it in the system. So it's going to look a little different, but um, <clears throat> again, it's for the most part shouldn't be new. What will be new, um, <clears throat> and uh, Jim mentioned this a little bit earlier about um, how some of the prevention and POPs had already been entering applications. Um, there are going to be some people who've had direct contract with boards from the um, <clears throat> from the board allocation dollars that we're going to be asking to enter information into the system. We're still <clears throat> figuring out, honestly, uh, exactly how that will work based on feedback we got yesterday. We want to make sure that it is not onerous and we're not asking for information we don't need. We're not trying to create more work, but uh, as he mentioned, you know, we, we need, <clears throat> we currently collect these data after the fact. Um, SAMHSA and, and others have, have let us know that it, <clears throat> we really need to be making sure we have this information going forward, so we want to make sure we have that in the best way. But um, there will be more information on that. Um, <clears throat> again, probably not today. Certainly happy to talk about it. But, um, you know, we are, we are working on that, how the best way we can get that in. So <clears throat> that is about the major things. Um, certainly people will be talking more. The one thing I do want to reiterate, uh, <clears throat> as you all know, because you're all here, this is a new system. Um, <clears throat> And we feel pretty good about it. We put a lot of work into it from a lot of people, um, <clears throat> but it's new. We don't know how it's actually going to work. So um, <clears throat> we want feedback. We want to know what you guys don't think work. We want to know how to do the better process. As, as Jim said, some of the things are going to be there, and if it's just absolutely unworkable, we'll have to find a workaround. <clears throat> if possible, we don't expect too many of those. But um, <clears throat> but we want to work with you. We want your feedback. You know, that's why this is a live training rather than a webinar. We, we, we want to engage, um, engage a dialogue. And if, if not today, um, <clears throat> you know, please write down your questions. Please call us. Please, uh, you know, protest outside Roads Tower, whatever you got to do, because um, <clears throat> we, we, we do want to hear it. So uh, with that, I will step away, and I am getting a note, so I'm going to stay here. <laughs> The go live date, it's a good note, thank you. <clears throat> uh, you may have noticed the <laughs> on the cover page we said the system would be live on June 6, and then we, well, not so quickly retracted that. Um, <clears throat> but we believed it was going to go live. There were a few more development issues and some information we were still needing to enter. So um, <clears throat> for those of you who may have tried to log in, it is not live. Um, should be live soon, and we will be sending out in Ohio News Now um, last information as well as posting on our websites and we will contact the uh, Provider Association, OACBA, <clears throat> whoever we need to to make sure that information goes out. But as soon as we know when that goes up um, when it's going up, we will let you know. So uh, I'm going to now introduce Matthew Moncarnik, who's going to walk you through an actual application process and this is when the real training begins. So. <clears throat> And also, she will not speak, but this is Patty Edmond. She was one of our she, – she will if you engage her personally. But <clears throat> um, <laughs> She's our resident mime. No. She uh, is one of our business analysts who was uh, integral in actually collecting the requirements, working with us, uh, translating between program and IT to make sure that, you know, this process ran smoothly. So that's why I introduce her as well. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Matthew Long Carrick. Uh, I work in the Bureau of Health Integration at the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. And first, just want to welcome you all here again today, uh, taking time out of your busy schedules. This is a particularly busy time of the year for everybody, so thank you very much for taking the time to come here today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start our team off here with a walkthrough of a treatment and recovery grant process. In a few minutes, uh, May will speak to some financial and federal requirements. 
and also Shemaine Marsh from Prevention will speak to some prevention grant implementation of reporting uh, processes later on too. Uh, but to get us going uh, here, uh, we go to my applications on this homepage. And as Tom uh, spoke to earlier, you would go to the GFMS link. Here you have a dashboard. Um, and going across the top uh, horizontally, first we have the home page, the application selections. There you have three uh, choices. You could go to grants, allocations, or a search function. Next is a funding tab, uh, and that will be uh, chiefly uh, financial uh, with disbursement requests, and that's a whole separate process. It's very short, uh, and Michelle and May can speak to that in a bit. We have reports. Uh, that is actually still in the development stage, uh, but uh, reporting will be part of this application in the future. Uh, lastly, maintenance again. Uh, this is where you can go ahead and update your email notifications uh, and the like. Um, way over on the far right-hand side is a gear icon. This is where, uh, in the near future, we will go ahead and post some, uh, some resources uh, in the document library. There will be a very technical user guide for folks who want to know how it uh, works from end to end from an IT perspective. Uh, we're also going to get some uh, common sense screenshots with very specific uh, guidance text boxes together, and we'll post that here as well. Uh, and now going vertically, we have um, some choices. Show my notifications, as Tom showed us earlier. Uh, today we have a happy notification, uh, a welcome uh, message. We are glad that you're here today. <laughs> um, we have show my allocations. And what we're focusing on today will be the third, show my applications. And before we get into that, we also have two final uh, disbursement uh, choices there. But if we go into the organization name selection, you see a drop-down menu. Uh, this, this will have your organization name. Uh, today we're going to do first step home. And First Step Home is one of four uh, mom sites, a very specialty grant uh, that we've had for the past three years in the state, addressing the opiate crisis and um, women who are in recovery and their, ch and their children. Uh, they're out of Cincinnati. They've been doing some fantastic work the past three years. Uh, they've been ar around a long time, and uh, we're happy to have them uh, working uh, on behalf of all Ohioans. Uh, we're going to go ahead and view this application. And the first thing we come to is the grant face sheet. Uh, this is some basic organizational information and uh, specifics about the project. Uh, the first thing we have is the organization. Uh, all this is pre-populated, as you can see. Uh, you would have to fill this out. Um, it would be blank if you were going in for the first time for a new application. Uh, the organization address is there. And the third uh, field there, it's worded a little oddly, but it's basically uh, who are you applying to for this funding. So in this case, you'd be applying to uh, Ohio MHAS. Uh, we have a service type choice. There would be four choices in a drop-down menu there. Uh, one would be treatment and recovery, which we're doing right now. Uh, one would be research and evaluation. One would be community supports, and then a fourth would be the prevention area. We have project area as well. This will be pre-populated uh, by the project leads back at Ohio MHAS. And um, as Jim and, and Tom said, um, we expect the project leads and the project managers at your organizations to be working pretty much as you always have. We'll just be using this new application. An application number will pre-populate. Uh, you'll have a state fiscal year. Uh, it says 2016 just for demo purposes today, but again, this is for 2017 and going forward. Now, this requested amount, uh, this is kind of important to note, that this is the grand total for the grant award. So if you're receiving some funding from Ohio MHAS and then you're receiving supplemental funding or, or matches, uh, that would be included in the grand total. So that's just not what you're receiving from MHAS. 
uh, question here about how many years the service provider's been in existence. Uh, that would be a menu too. Uh, I think it's between one to five years and it scales up. Um, as I said, First Step Home has been around for about 25 years, so uh, that's the highest uh, selection. Uh, you would give your program title a name. Uh, in this case, it's the mom's uh, project. And then we have some contact information. Uh, we have first name, last name, uh, phone number, an email address. And as Tom said, anything with a red asterisk, uh, that is a required field. So you would definitely have to have a primary uh, contact name. Uh, we have a secondary program contact name as well, uh, and that's just you know good management. You need to have somebody as a backup. Um, so we have not made that a required field, but it's probably a good idea to have a backup uh, program manager or contact for when someone might be out of the office. Uh, getting down to the fiscal officer, first name, last name, contact information again. And then we have uh, just a note down here about who the Ohio MHAS uh, project lead is. Uh, and that's kind of hard coded from the other side when the application is being set up at Ohio MHAS. Might be a good time to uh, let you know that the next button, whenever you go through this application, the next button is basically your save button. So when you complete one of these screens, go ahead and click next to save it before you go on to any other portion of the application. Here we're at the organization information. This is uh, a read-only section. Uh, this will speak to some of the iPortal uh, organization information that Tom uh, talked about earlier. Uh, you want to make sure all this information is correct, updated. If it is not, if there's something that needs to be changed, you go to the iPortal icon right there, and that will take you back to the iPortal. And there you would make your changes and update your information. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce May right now. She's going to speak to some of the federal requirements. Thank you, Matt. Hi, I'm May King with uh, Fiscal Services, and the um, this page is new to the providers on the grant side. But this information we collected in prior years through a through a different mechanism, and this information is here because it is required by the feds. Whether you receive federal funding or state funding, we're asking all providers, all grantees, to complete this this page. Um, on this page, you'll see is asking for the executive director's information, all their contact information, their name, address, email address, and phone number, your board of directors' information, um, and also the DUNS number down here. The DUNS number is a required field as indicated by the red asterisk. If you do not have a DUNS number, you can click. There's a link here or phone number. If you click on the link, it will take you to the the website where you can apply for one. On the website, it says it takes about one business day. And actually, we did a test, and we received one in five minutes when we were in the meeting. Also, the IBHS number is related to the treatment providers. It's an optional field. However, if you have that number or if you don't know what it is, there's a link here that you can um, in acquire more information or to apply for one. Again, this information we have to submit to the FES when we submit our uh, applications or to, to SAMHSA. The congressional district is grayed out. Um, this information is automatically populated for you based on your location, your city. And that information we also collect and submit to SAMHSA. The, this information down here is it asks, do you receive 80% of your annual gross revenue or $25 million or more from federal funding? And right now it says no. However, uh, it's a drop-down bo box. If it says yes, on page 12 of your handouts, there's that button that says Add Executive. When you click on that button, it will prompt you to uh, complete the information for executive. And you have to enter at least one to a maximum of five of your executive executives if this test applies to your agency. And next, I'm going to turn back over to Matt to go through the rest, the remainder of the application process.
Okay, we're at the project narrative portion of the application. Uh, this is where you will go ahead and talk about uh, some of the problem statements, uh, what the scope of work uh, the grant is going to address. And I believe this field is a uh, character limited field. It's 500 characters. So, you know, you can write a short story, but not a novel. Um, and what you see is what you get right here. It's just it's very straightforward. Next, we have the community assessment sheet. Uh, this is where you would talk about what community assessment tool you used, to, uh, kind of a needs assessment, uh, if you will. Uh, you would have a, a drop down box uh, in a new application. Uh, here you just see a grayed out field because we've populated it for you. Uh, you would also have a brief summary of the findings there. And you might want to talk about some of the statistics, some of the findings, uh, whatever's relevant to the assessment. Uh, and here you have also in a ribbon that just notes what the tool was, a description, and then the date of the assessment. Uh, the service capacity page, more information about the, uh, the population and, and some other narrative questions below. Uh, the first section is the behavioral health areas that are addressed, and you would click all that apply. Um, for example, I've clicked housing there for uh, the Moms Award because housing was a, vo a very uh, important component of that specialty grant. Uh, second, we have a target populations, and that targeted adult females, and First Step Home also uh, serves children up to the age of 12 to, to try to keep uh, the unification of the family unit there. Uh, you have a selection for the age groups. Again, check all that apply. And here we get down to a few uh, brief narrative questions. Uh, one is the service provider's capacity to provide the services to the target population. So you're just putting some narrative behind uh, the data that you enter just above. And then we have some disparities questions. How are behavioral health disparities manifested in the problem? Uh, how will the proposed program interventions address those behavioral health disparities? And then we have um, an elements of sustainability section to talk about the sustainability of the work involved. Uh, there would be a, a, uh, a menu there as well uh, that project leads would have populated and you would go through that menu and, and select the, uh, the element. And then also there is a section on the comparative advantage. And that's also just an opportunity for organizations to talk about uh, why the work that this grant will achieve is, is, is so important and, and why the organization can carry it out successfully. Uh, and here's the staff description page. Uh, you can add as many staff as, as needed, any staff that work on the grant. Um, it could be a project manager, a fiscal officer. If there are a couple of social workers that are doing work associated with the grant, you would add them here too. Uh, the purpose of this section is not to include everybody in the organization. This is just very targeted who is related to this grant. Um, we have areas here for the title, an email address, and also there will be a, um, a menu of staff qualifications when you apply, uh, and you'll have you know, different uh, certifications and license sures and, and things that you can choose from. And there's also uh, an opportunity to select other and then add it uh, as needed. Now this implementation plan page, um, I'm told by IT that this is chiefly uh, and specifically addressing some of the help desk techniques that they've had over the past few years. Um, a lot of this information lived in different areas and different ap grant applications uh, between former, former ODMH and former ODATIS, uh, but IT went ahead and built this um, project model wizard so everything could kind of hang together in a, in a very uh, uh, continuous way just from start to finish and it's very visual so you can see it uh, pretty no nonsense. So first you have a project model type and you will have a selection there. 
uh, you have project model. You have a description of that project model. And for treatment and recovery, uh, again, because this is the treatment and recovery pathway, uh, we have a level of care, and there will be a, a selection there as well. And again, uh, organizations can talk with their project leads to talk about um, just uh, what that level of care should be. Uh, and simply a start date and an end date. And next. One of the federal requirements, uh, as we noted earlier, are the national outcome measures, uh, the NOMS. Uh, it is a, it's a very finite list that uh, you can choose from. In this case, uh, for, the NOM, uh, for the MOMS grant, uh, we selected stability and housing, just as an example. And for every NOM, you have an objective that's associated with it. And in this case, straightforward, just increase stability in housing. You want safe and stable housing. And further defining the objective, this gives you the opportunity to talk about how many people are served by the intervention and how many you are predicting will achieve this objective. So this is where you quantify uh, what your outcomes are going to be. And there's also, for treatment and recovery side, uh, there's a level of change uh, where you would talk with your project lead to talk about what is expected as a level of change there. And again, just for the treatment and recovery side, we have defined services and activities. And this, again, the service would just address what the intervention is, what is the modality, uh, and then what are the activities that would be associated with that service? And you could have multiple activities under, under a service. Uh, this kind of just summarizes what we have already done. How many participants do you have? What is the date range of the work? And then based on what we populated already in the application, you have the job titles of those responsible. I'm clicking next again. It brings us to kind of a summary sheet, uh, so you can see all the work that you just did in the wizard. Make sure everything is uh, as ship shape as, as you want it to be. And when you click done, it takes you to the next page. Um, but before we go on with that, I'd like to welcome Shemaine up here to talk about how the prevention path works. Thank you, Matt. Welcome, everyone. I am Shemaine Marsh, a Community Prevention Administrator in the Office of Prevention and Wellness. And um, I like to call myself the POPs extraordinaire. I know I talk to you, some of you daily, weekly, concerning your issues with the system and trying to get them corrected. Um, Patty, if you can go back to the face sheet first before we start with the implementation. Okay, one thing I would like to mention um, that Matt spoke on earlier, um, the grant, the GIFA, the grant for um, funding applicants, this service type and project area will be fine on the GIFA if you're receiving funding from the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. So the service type and project area will not pre-populate. You will need to find this service type and project area on the GIFA before you can proceed and your requested amount. So um, just remember to uh, write that down and look at the GIFA, which is on our website, and find that information. So we will start with the implementation plan for prevention. Using um, Bowling Green University, and as Matt mentioned, we're really excited about this new uh, wizard feature for the implementation plan. For a project model type, we have evidence-based practice. We have adapted evidence-based, which you can't see right now because it's a, um, we pre-populated this. Promising practice and local developed programs. If you're using a local developed program, you will need to go into the maintenance section and complete that information if it's a local developed program. Evidence-based practice, adapted evidence-based, and promising practice will pre-populate for you. Um, if you have a local promising practice, such as um, a Drug-Free Action Alliance with SmartBet, you will have to pre-populate that as well. 
So for this particular application, we're using evidence-based practice, and all those will pre-populate. If you're using adapted evidence-based, such as life skills, and you're changing it based on the school schedule, you will need to let us know what you're changing about that ev adapted evidence-based program. So we're, we're using advocacy here. And for prevention, this is where you'll see the change at, is we use level of risk, universal direct, universal indirect, selected or indicated. And the start and end date should be based on when you're implementing your program, not the fiscal year. But if you start on July 1, you will use July 1. What you don't notice here is um, we've added a save and finish button. So if you have a meeting to go to and you started on your application, you can save it and finish later. You can go to the previous section or you can move on to your um, NOM. So here you will select your desired NOM, your national outcome measure, which we've selected access capacity, and these all will be pre-populated for you. Moving on to objectives, these will be pre-populated as well. And I always recommend to our providers, select one NOM and one objective. Um, we selected participants will improve system capacity. And just in previous systems before, you will need to put your estimated number served here. In this grant fiscal year of the 1,000 people served by this intervention, 500 will achieve the objective. And you select your level of change, whether it's community, individual, or family. People tend to use percentages, but we require hard numbers. Okay, so with prevention, we have strategies and services based on CSAP, the six CSAP strategies. For this particular application, we've selected community-based process, and the service underneath is coalition building. You still will need to put your estimated number served under each strategy and service. And I think this is a great feature with the wizard um, development because before you had to edit your whole implementation plan to find an error or to change different things about the implementation plan. Now you can go directly to your strategy, directly to your NOM, and just change that information. So I think that's a great addition to the new system. So that's your prevention implementation plan, and I will turn it over to May to do the line item budget. Hi. If you're following along in your handouts, I'm on page 31 of the handouts. The line item budget is something you're familiar with when you're completing the grant application. It looks a little bit different because we've trying to uh, we've have we mirror, we're mirroring the the federal standard form 424. So with that, you will see two categories now. It's divided into direct cost and also indirect cost. Indirect costs. So, um, can you go back to the top? Okay. Your headers are uh, the MHAS is the amount that you're applying to the department. So, this the sum of the line item budgets. Your grant total should match your requested amount that's on your face sheet. Anytime you put a number in these fields, the system is going to prompt you for a narrative. So. In your line item budget, if you don't have any numbers to put in, don't put a zero, just leave a blank. Because if you put a zero, it's going to prompt you for a narrative. The other column says other. These are funds you might get from your local levy, United Way, or other sources of funding besides the department funding. This is optional. If you would like to complete the line item budget for other funding, you're welcome to, but it's not required. And again, if you put any numbers in here, it's required, you're required to put in a narrative. Uh, what I want to point out is the line item budget in the travel section, we have kind of broken that down into these categories. Before, it was lumped together, and your narrative could be very, very long. Now, we've divided into mileage, airfare, lodging, and meals per diem. And in here, uh, the travel rules are posted on our website in the gear that Matt talked about before, to your far right here. There's links to the State of Ohio OBM travel rule, which will give you your mileage reimbursement for the quarter. 
as well as the GSA website, which will give you the per diem rates for your lodging and your meals. As you complete through this document, this line item budget page, again, the, I want to stress the total, the, there's a validation check, because a lot of times your budgets or your applications will be returned because your budgets didn't equal the amount that's requested on the face sheet. So the value added for fiscal um, is that the grand total here under your MHAS funding, that total must equal your face sheet requested amount. So if you get an error, an error message here is because the line item budgets are not adding up to what you're applying for. And also, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the narrative. There, I believe the under all these text boxes have a character limit. Um, the character limit, I believe, is 300. If you need more room to write your narrative, uh, you can uh, upload an attachment. Uh, the nice feature uh, under project documentation, there's an area that Matt will talk about later where you can upload any additional attachments that's needed for your grant application. With that, I'm going to turn back to Matt. That's going to walk you through the remainder of the grant application process. Thank you, May. And as you can see, um, we're in the home stretch of the grant application. And this is the project documentation page. Uh, on this page, uh, you'll have the opportunity to upload um, some different documents, uh, some standard grants management documents that uh, folks will uh, need to submit. The first thing, um, we'll go ahead and address the NOSA later in, a, in just a moment, uh, but the first thing here is the proof of liability. This is your uh, proof of insurance. Uh, typically, it's just a one-page form, um, and this, here you would go ahead and upload that. Uh, you could give it a name, the insurance carrier, the policy number, the amount for the insurance, and then the date of expiration. And as always, with any of this information, contact your project lead if you have questions. Uh, the next section is the annual financial reporting audit or uh, financial section. Uh, here you would also upload your latest financial statement. Uh, you have questions here regarding audits. Has the agency had a current annual financial reporting audit within the past 12 months? Uh, most organizations do. Um, in that case, you would select yes. Uh, there's also a no. Uh, but if yes, the date the audit was completed, and then the time period that the audit covers. Uh, the final question is any findings, and it's, again, yes or no. Uh, if it was yes, there would be a brief text box where you would describe what those findings were. Uh, the last few uh, sections here, uh, as May said, it's an opportunity to upload additional documentation. Uh, not necessarily required, but um, if you'd like to upload any information, you can do that here. Uh, some grants have memorandums of understanding, uh, some don't, so um, if you do, you could add that here. And then a miscellaneous additional attachments function uh, at the end. And the reason why we have this NOSA up here, just to, to address this, uh, that's because we've walked through this demonstration from end to end, uh, and everything is pre-populated. So when you do complete an application and the application has been reviewed and approved, that's when this would populate in, in your section of the application and you could go view it at that time. Right now we'll go to the next step, the assurances. Um, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with the agreement and assurance process we have every year. Uh, typically it was a paper product. This year, um, one of the really great innovations is we have um, an, a, an agreement box uh, so it serves as a digital signature this year and your CEO executive officer uh, or designee would go ahead and review these would uh, click I agree and that would serve as uh, your signature uh, for the assurance And almost to the end, uh, we have the signature page. Uh, here you would have um, a function to uh, download the signature page, a blank signature page, and it would ask you for both uh, your agency's 
uh, Chief Executive Officer and President of the Board of Directors to sign. Uh, when you uh, have that signed, you can go ahead and re-upload it into the system. And it would have an upload date as well uh, for the documentation record. And now we're just about ready uh, to submit this application. You'll be prompted to uh, make sure everything is complete and accurate in the application. Uh, if you went ahead and hit submit because you thought you were finished, you would get any short list of things that are incomplete down here at the bottom of the page. Um, and you can go back and, and finish them over on uh, the left-hand side ribbon there. But if you did go ahead and uh, click Submit and it was successfully uh, submitted to the department, it would go into a re uh, review process. Uh, both um, Ohio MHAS project leads and fiscal staff would go ahead and review that, approve that, and um, when you do submit, you will get an email notification on the status of, of the award, or application, rather. Um, and at that point, it would just be up to you to stay in touch with your project lead to see what the status of your application is. And that's, that's really the GFMS um, workflow. So hopefully, uh, it's going to get more intuitive as you get, become more familiar with it. And at this time, I uh, would like to introduce Michelle Sherman. She's going to talk about the disbursement process, how to get the money. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Um, I'm going to refer or draw your attention to the screen. These pages are not in your packet. So um, I'll, as I say, ask you to look at the screen. Um, just a quick review after after your um, application has been reviewed and approved you will receive an email notification that your funding is approved and that your NOSA is available you'll come back into the system it'll be available in the project documentation page so different than receiving an email from maybe your project lead with the NOSA attached to it you won't, you won't get that email, but you will be able to always come back into the system and see that. So you'll get an email notification that is, is available for you. So once you get that notification that your NOSA is ready and available, at that point your funding is available to be drawn down. So you will come back in if you're, when you're ready to uh, make a disbursement request. You'll come back to your dashboard. Under the funding tab, you'll see disbursement requests. You'll select that item. Uh, again, you'll put in your organization address, fiscal year you'll select, the grant number, and just to draw your attention there, if you have multiple grants with the department, each of those grant numbers will show up, so you will select which one you are drawing down the funds for in this particular request. Uh, your disbursement day would be the date of your request. You'll select Create Request and it will bring you to your request screen. Now, this screen, um, well, first of all, the, the intention of the system is that um, you will receive your funds in the manner that you receive them today. So whether you, uh, you come in and request them as the provider or if you receive them through the board, that, that process, the intention is, is to uh, stay the same unless there are you know, um, individual differences. But, um, but if you are a provider that comes in and requests the funds yourself, You'll come to this page, and um, although the page looks different than the request that you may have filled out currently, um, it's a familiar page because it is actually the line item budget. So the line item budget um, that you filled out with your application that has been approved, each of those items will be listed under, each, under the categories, um, the MHAS approved budget. And then the column next to that, the requested amount, as you request your funds, you'll request them by line item. So just for, for these purposes, we'll uh, just request 1,000 in personnel. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, well, that's all of our approved, <laughs> our request. Um, and you'll submit your request. Once your request is submitted, uh, you will see that you're, uh, you'll get a banner that will let you know that it has been requested um, successfully. 
uh, uh, one thing I, I'm sorry I didn't point out when we were on the screen, but um, your line item, your line items, you will be able to request, as I say, by item. If you request an amount um, more than the line item amount, budgeted amount, it will show up in red that it is over the amount of the line item. Oh, thank you. Sorry, we'll get back there. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Um, and, and across the top, um, the total amount of the award on the left-hand side, the amount available if it would be different than the um, awarded amount would be in that um, column there. Um, total received to date, if this were not your first request and you had already received funds, it would come up in that column or in that block there. Um, and then the balance remaining that you have available to draw down the current request, the total amount that you've currently requested, and then the balance after that request has been submitted. This is the mind portion. <laughs> I'm the one that's not supposed to speak. Um, I don't know where Beth, Beth is ready. Beth here. is ready to come up. Beth is ready to come up and uh, <laughs> walk us through the Q and A. Okay, now we're to the part where everybody wants to participate, right? Okay, so once again, you have those little half sheets of paper, and those we would like you to write all of your questions. Um, maybe if you can squeeze concerns on there, we'll take those two comments. Um, but we're actually going to walk around with microphones, and you have an opportunity um, to go ahead and ask some questions while you're here today. Um, to help facilitate everybody getting started once the system opens up and is live. So, who wants to go first? <clears throat> right here. No, that's fine. So, I'm from fiscal, so I ask a lot of questions. Uh, in, the, in the line item budget area, um, kind of two questions. When you're doing your drawdown, tying in with the line item budget, Currently, it's now I'm new, so I read a lot of things and I may get the things right or wrong. But in Olga, if you have there's certain areas in your budget, um, and if you have less than a 10% change as the year's going along, it's my understanding you don't have to do a revised budget in that particular area. So in this system now, if you have a less than 10% change in an area, but you go above what you're approved, how do you, how do you get through that? Um, so the, the um, indication will alert you that you are going above it. It's not a stopgap. Oh, okay. But it will alert you that you're going over that budget item. Um, your, your program, or I'm sorry, your project lead will approve the request. They will know, you know, in communication with you or, or whatever, if there's a difference in that budget item and that type of thing, the 10% still applies. It's it's not, it's just a, in case you have a typo or okay. are trying to request a lot more money or whatever than is in that line item budget. But it's it just to let you know, you. it's not a stopgap, but it's a warning. Okay. And then is it all right if I ask another question? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> so the next one is also with the drawdowns. Um, currently you do it on a cumulative basis. So now are we just going to each individual drawdown amount? That's Is that correct. correct? That's correct, what okay. you're drawing down for that period. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, is this system going to coordinate with the three largest boards system that they're developing at this this present time? The state. So, 
So as far as the board systems, what you're referring to, um, there's systems, the, the two active ones are GOSH and SHARES. Those are, are claims payment systems. Um, and this is a, a grant grant system. So I, I don't think they're going to intersect at any point. If there is a need for it to intersect, we can look into that. Okay. If 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 you're if you I, I guess we want to know if if you're giving duplicate information and what that information is. Okay. And yeah, we are also um, new, I'm in Butler County and we're new um, from the alcohol and drug side into the mental health GOSH system. We just finished our application. We'll then have to go in and re-enter everything into this new system as if we are writing it new. Is that right? I mean, we'll just have to, and because it's passed through money, so we'll just have to go in and do duplicate work, which is what we've had to do year after year with POP. So I just want to know, is that correct? We are going to have to go in and do that. Yes? Yes. So every year, even though um, in theory, Historically, these have been continuation funds. You do have to reapply every year. Um, we, as project leads, have been through the system, and after you sign in and you know get more familiar with the screens, it really only takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, you, really, uh, I because the fields are so limited. It's not like you're writing, like Matthew said earlier, you're not writing a novel. Novel. It's not like you're doing a full-blown 30-page proposal. It's, you've got 500 characters on that one page. It's, it's more um, just that initial time when you're trying to get familiar with the flow of the screens. And we'll have multiple implementation plans. That's correct, right? I mean, it still is set up that way, Shemaine? Yes, it's yep. still set up so you can create multiple plans. We will have to do yes. that. So that adds multiple. Now, the one thing that we had talked about in POPs that I saw has not changed is where we can select only one universal indicated or select. And we, you know, our projects actually do all of those. But it still looks like we can only do one. In, in the reporting, will it come up where we can still report on all three of them? Yes. Okay. This may be a totally frivolous question. I understand before I ask it, but with a limit of 500 characters, you're you're out. You're giving us 500 characters to answer a question. It took you 124 to write. I mean, how do we? How are you expecting us to give you any idea? Of the you know of the answers you're at, the, of the information you're asking for, in that short amount of in that limited amount of space. So um, what we did was we broke the questions out so you can be clear and concise in the first one, and then we broke it out so that you can respond to the other questions as you move through the process. It wasn't to hurt you, it was actually to be clear and concise, and this was actually brought forth from the providers long ago. So this just carried on, it's not new. I have, uh, exactly. I have three questions, exactly. if that's okay. Um, the first one is, are final reports for the fiscal year 16 still to be um, inputted into OLGA? That's correct. That's what I August thought. 31st is your deadline. Okay. And then if we are already getting our funding through boards and it's going to stay that way, uh, we don't need to make funding requests in GFMS. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And lastly, does the system allow for multiple DUNS numbers? I will write that question down and we will find out. Okay. Thank you. 
My experience is with the POP system, and in that you could add and delete staff members. You could give them varying levels of access. Is that going to be available on this as well? Yes, that is correct. Can you show us where that is real quick? In the iPortal. Uh, I'm going to actually talk to it, if you guys wouldn't mind. Uh, I want to make sure, because we're still finishing the fine-tuning of the iPortal with uh, the roles and permissions. Uh, but it is, it is really simple as far as managing of your users, uh, very similar to how you're doing it now in POPs. It is allowing you to just come into the system itself, uh, set people's roles and access levels by assigning them a role and permission. And I guess I'll show you real quick because you guys are all looking at me like, come on. <laughs> so, um, and I'm going to um, bear with me. I've got to sign out to sign in because this person does not have the rights to do that. So. Uh, you actually have an organization admin, and they'll be the person that has the rights to this, and it'll be for your organization. So this will not be every user in your system. So I want to be very clear with that. It'll be maybe one or two people for your organization that will have these rights. Um, that Those people would come into the admin role. As you'll see, there's lots of uh, features here for you. You would find your user. So I'm going to just look up myself real quick. And it'll find me. So I'm going to look for this. And there's actually a way to assign a role. So you would actually come in, click on the assigning of the role, and it'll search. And you'll, you'll kind of search by the role and find the actual application. So Word GFMS, you guys would not see all of these. I'm an admin, so it would just be related to GFMS. And you would actually be having two roles that you guys would be able to do. It would be either the board or the applicant level, and that would be your, your two roles that you could assign them on also. If, so there's those. Uh, all you have to do is click Assign. And like I said, it's a little buggy right now, so we're still fixing this piece. Um, and it would be actually right here. Would, the role would be right here. You can also add an organization. By clicking on this, you could search for yourselves. Uh, it would actually only show your guys' organizations you're associated with. Maybe you're, maybe you're doing the business for five other people, five other organizations. We added the organizations in for you guys under that, those roles as well. And I'm just going to do a quick search. There's about a couple hundred of them here, so it takes a little bit. And you would just find your organization. And I'm going to use a dummy data account here and assign it. Close and update. And it'll say it's been updated successfully. And then you would just have the user log out, or if you're doing it for yourself, log out, log back in, and it'll be good to go. Um, any questions on that? Okay. <laughs> Two in the front. <laughs> yes, we were actually importing all of your guys' user information, all of your uh, organizations and associations. So if you guys have already done all of this, we're trying to save you guys lots of time by bringing all of that information in. Yeah. Um, so my question is, this has not gone well for our organization in previous systems. I'm the CCO and our CFO. Okay. Neither of us have the ability to assign roles. And I'm assuming we would be appropriate to be at the administrative function. Mm -hmm. We've sent help desk requests, et cetera. What do we need to do to be able to assign roles within our organization? What I would love for you to do is find one of these lovely uh, project leads. Uh, just let, send them the information saying that you would like to be your organization admin, and we'll uh, contact you later on for some more training. What agency are you from? Great. Thank you. On For UMADOPS, there is like 12 in there, but they don't say UMADOP of Dayton, so you're trying to find your organization. 
Can you kind of clean that up, like Lima, Dayton, Cincinnati? Uh, yes. Um, we, we, that's part of our cleanup process. We actually had around, because we were merging f over five systems, we had almost 7,000 organizations. We're now down to 600 and some. So you can see how we're, we had some additional data. Um, so, yeah, we actually are doing working about getting your locations and being clear on that. So. Yes, hello. Um, my question is, um, with the system, I was, I'm in the system from a previous agency. I moved to another agency. Part of me, I'm able to access within the new agency that I am, but with the OGA system, I can't get in it at the new agency, and I can't come out of it of the old one. So when they shifted everything over, <laughs> when they shifted everything over, do I need to create a new process or just go in under um, the POPs part? What I would love for you to do is contact our help desk. <laughs> they, we will gladly take care of that for you. Okay. Any other great questions for him? I okay. have three. Qu oh, I don't know if it's specifically for you, but I have three questions. Somebody mentioned that the re uh, fiscal year 16 reports are due for Olga on August 31st. Does that pertain to POPs also? For expenditures, it's August 31st, and for summer reports, it's July 30th. Thank you. And then also, um, can anybody answer, if we get with our project leads, can the project leads pre-populate some of the fields on this system? No. Thank you. My last question is, do we have a due date for these applications for fiscal year 17, and when is the um, money going to start flowing for the first quarter for fiscal year 17? Worth a shot. Um, <clears throat> as for the applications, as for when the money will start flowing, um, it is when the applications come in. So obviously we're working very hard to get the system open. Um, certainly as the applications come in, there is a review process, so we'll be working as quickly as possible to turn it around. Um, you know, we are, we are aware that uh, there have been delays in the over the past several years, we apologize profusely for that again, but um, <clears throat> now we have a new new system. But uh, so, hopefully, that will not cause new delays. We've made some internal changes. We're going to try to get those reviews quickly. So, um, the applications are due. I mean, you will need to speak with your your program lead specifically for that. But I can, from the fiscal standpoint, uh, once the system opens, we will start reviewing completed applications and get that turned around as quickly as we can. And yesterday there was a question about uh, end date for application process, and we're going to be a little bit flexible as we open this up and work with your project lead if you're having any difficulty with your application so that we can get you reviewed and funded. Okay. A couple of clarifying questions. When you're talking about if you normally receive your allocation through a board, you'll continue to do the, that in this system. Is the board going to be creating these applications on behalf of the provider, or will the provider be completing the application and the board just drawing the funds? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. The, the same. The same as today. You. You. Um, the provider puts in the application, and then the board. The boards flow. Or the, I'm sorry. The funds flow through your board. Is that what you're describing? That's correct, but I did not hear a step where the board then had an opportunity to review the provider's application before it went forward to you all. And that part is still in development. Um, we're testing the board approval process currently, and that will be pushed out soon. Very good. Thank you. And then my set, I, I have one more clarifying question. If you're getting um, grant funds that are multi-year, and so you're closing out 16 in the old system. Are we going to be putting fiscal year 17 into this new system? Or are we going to, is that considered not a new application because it was given as a multi year award? You will put everything for fiscal year 17 in the new system. So even if it's something that we were given in 15 for fiscal year 16 and 17. Just fiscal year 17 is going to go into the new. Correct. Got it. Uh, 
Um, in particular, for the multi-year budgets, is there an area in terms of to be able to submit budget revisions? Everybody's looking at everybody up there. <laughs> <laughs> that may be a question we'll take back and get an answer for. Budget <clears throat> revisions for the new application you we were submitting. You I mean, as we go through, all yes. right, I'm going to put in my 17, 18 year, multi year. I get to year 18 and I've got some budget revisions. Yes, you will yes. be able to create revisions in the system. And that will be in the for application process? For, or? Yes, yes. And and for your application, you will work with your project lead for any revisions you need to make, and you will work with fiscal for any budget revisions. And when the uh, application, if it should be sent back to you, there will always be a notification that says uh, the information that we're requesting or why your application came back. And one of them may be for a budget revision. Um, once the budget is in there, once it's approved, uh, we can then request or you can request, communicate with us, again, your project lead to help you further that process or expedite that process. Notification button that had those little numbers in it, very important. Um, I like to ask the, this question. For all funding that come through the board, would it go through this system or is this system only related to grant funds? For example, federal block grant treatment or prevention that are not grant based but our allocations, the per capita, things like that. Does this go through the system um, as an application to the board or, again, is it just the grant funds? Yeah, this is kind of harkening back to what I said earlier. The, the intent is we're going to get every provider into this system. Um, <clears throat> we still need to work out a few of these specifics just to make sure that we're not being um, – you know, overly prescriptive and making you enter a lot of information you don't need to enter. But, yeah, so some of the contractual um, sort of like relationships, it's a tough word, uh, the, some of the contractual relationships you guys have with, with your boards that come through the allocation so you're not in the grant system, it's now the grant and funding management system, so we're trying to get it all in there. So um, <clears throat> stay tuned. We're working on the specifics of that as well. But, yeah, the intent is to get – all those in. So uh, we have we have a bunch of people in a bunch of different systems. How do we know who's going to be the administrator? Because they might be an administrator in this system, and they might be a project lead in that system. How do we know who's going to be what when, when day one starts? As far as the department or your agency? Our agency. What'd you say, Patty? It's for whoever you designate. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay, so I work in the finance department, and I, once all the budget, of the CFO gives me all the budget stuff, I enter all that. I make sure somebody, in, this is in POPs, somebody in prevention does all the narrative. So I oversee all that, make sure everything's complete, and then I'm the one that sends it to our board for review. So does that make me the project lead? You're the fiscal lead at your agency. Okay. At your agency. Right, right. Yes, you'll be the fiscal lead. Okay. What we're asking is, we're asking is when this system opens up, we have to go in and log in and create? Like, who, are you, do you have a default as somebody in our organization that's already set up? Or... For pops, but we might have somebody else for Olga. So what we're trying to clarify is, who's going to be what when that? I can speak to Olga. So in the Olga system, in the new GMF, that system. <laughs> in that system, when you create your application, you're going to tell me who's who. Okay. When right. you create, remember, like on the organization page, as you come down through that flow, you're going to tell me who's the primary, who's the secondary, and who's the fiscal. Okay. That, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, over here, um, 
we're a vendor through, uh, we were invited here, um, or I'm not sure if we're a provider. We're new to this. So I'm not sure how much, if any, of this applies to us as far as in the manner with which we get paid for what we're going to be doing. Are we connected through the funding tab and fill that material out so that when it's time for us to get paid, we go through that process? It, de it depends on who you are. And you still will go through the process. Safe, safe kids, uh, safe schools. Okay, then that's you, Shemaine. That's. Uh -oh. If you currently receive any funding from us for uh, directly, you will go through the system to complete an application. So we do go through this process. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we, we we've already gone through the RFP process and been approved and said you've got you know that that type of thing. So we go ahead and populate this. Correct. Okay. Thank you. We started the process, and we're told that we need a purchase order, but we don't know how to go about getting a purchase order. We need that to do this process? We were told that we need a purchase order in order to get paid. So we do not. Or a contract number. For grants. What he said. I know, he troubleshooted from the back, nice. If the boards draw down the funds for the agency, will they still have to draw down the funds by line item? Yes, the, the drawdown request form is by line item. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter who's drawing it down, the agencies are still going to have to provide the line item detail to the board so they can draw it down? In the broad sense, yes. Um, that is one of the issues that was brought up yesterday. Um, some of the contracts have case rates, per diems, this kind of thing. Uh, and it does not make sense if you have a, you know, a cap rate of $100 or a fee-for-service arrangement to decide arbitrarily that $60 of that cap rate is, you know, personnel. Um, so we are discussing how best to do that. But um, to the extent that, yes, you are drawing to the board you are presenting to the board that you have $100 in personnel costs and 50 in office supplies. Yes, the board will need to draw the 100 and the 50. And then we'll make sure that for the fee for service arrangements and that type of thing, we have a, a workable system. And the second question is um, on the line item under direct costs versus indirect costs. On the direct costs line, all of my personnel goes under that, no matter what. If they're administrative costs, I'm still going to put them under direct costs for personnel? Who's working? The personnel cost is only uh, staff members assigned to the project. So if you have a caseworker, uh, a counselor, that's what goes in the personnel. Uh, line item. So where does my executive director and financial officer go? Where did you put those previously? Personnel. You put those in personnel before? Okay, then, then you'll continue to do that. So. Okay. More questions? In the I back. see a hand in the back over here on the right. Um, with regard to the uh, application process for the board's funding, um, in a couple of the boards that we work with, I may have 12 to 15 line items um, for various uh, areas of funding. So would I have to submit 12 to 15 application for every single line item for that board funding? That are not, these are allocations, not grants, 12 to 15 line items. That's what. That's one of the things that we need to work through. Uh, we we don't know. It's it came up yesterday, and it's 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 one of the processes that we need to work through. Will the driver's intervention fund go through this system? It will not. It will not. That will still go through the EDIP system. 
Um, under the ad staff, there's some licensure that's missing, like an LISW, LISWS. So when you pick your service type, the, the drop-down menus that you will encounter throughout the application are defined by the project leads under the service type. And so with different service types, you will see different drop-down drop menu choices. If um, a good example is these licensure um, issues, um, if the particular license or credential that you're looking for is not there, there's an other box, and then it will ask you for what that person is. So you can proceed that way. And just to <clears throat> add on to that and really kind of more of a general note, um, mentioned before this is a new system, so we are constantly expanding. If, you know, LISW is we find in none of the drop downs, will that make sense to add that in as a <clears throat> maintenance item a little bit later as we move on? Um, so, yeah, and that, that's going to be kind of a, a general theme um, throughout this. As I mentioned earlier, we, we, we do want your feedback. Um, won't be able to make every change requested, won't be able to make it, certainly not immediately, but we want to hear that because, you know, this is not an out-of-the-box system that we are just going to stand up and then walk away from. We're going to be constantly working on it, constantly making enhancements. So as you see those kind of things, please let us know. More questions? We still have plenty of time. <laughs> they're, they're getting to you. Sorry. Um, what about, I am assuming that federal grants that come down to you and then down to the boards and then I am the provider will also have to go through here? Yes. And with that basis, I mean, that starts right away versus, I have a federal grant that started um, technically was supposed to have started last October. So, you know, by this October, I have to have my federal funding all taken care of for that calendar year. So let me clarify, are you referring to the SAPT block grant, federal block grant? No. Um, of course, I just went blank on the initials of this one. Cabby? Okay. I guess I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we can take this offline. In general, if you received this grant in 16, what we were you know, saying before, um, <clears throat> and some of that money's already been flowing, we will still go through the old system until the close of the 16 period. This is the GIFMIS system is any, for anything 17 going forward. So that is your closing year versus federal closing year. To answer the cabbie question. Ah, I just I understood what you're asking. Yes. <laughs> that is state fiscal year, not federal fiscal year. Uh, uh, Deb, is Roma here? Okay. Roma. Roma is here in the room. Now, Cabby does, we have a lot of federal year grants. However, we always award your notice of subaward on a state fiscal year. So if you look at your NOSAs, it's on a state fiscal year. And I think in prior years, Roma or Deborah Givens have gone into the Olga system and created the applications for you. So moving forward within the new GFMS system, you as a CAPI provider will have to go into the system and put in the application. But again, work with your project lead, uh, which is Deborah or Catherine Williams. You can work through that, through that process. More questions? Hands up so our people can get the mics to you. Oh, there's one here. What was the question? question was, how will, they, will you all be notified when the system is up and ready? It will come through a News Now notification.
I, I hate to be redundant, but is there a is there a target date that you're looking at for this to be up and running? Um, I I just I'm I'm not familiar with uh, applying for grants for the state fiscal year and them being due after July one after June thirtieth. So I just wondered how long are we talking? Possibly. I'm looking at Tom. He's the project manager, and he's looking around the room, so that's not good. Uh, can, can, by the end of the month, is that too aggressive, Tom? He's saying no to that. Okay. Joyce, down here in front. Joyce, oh, sorry. I think I missed it. Someone else might have asked the question already. But for treatment and recovery, we're to choose one NOM and one objective, but we're able to report on more if we wish? I think Shemaine was actually talking to prevention. As for treatment and recovery, I just want to say to you that if you choose more, you'll have to follow the process on each one of those to track them. It will be in your best interest to stick with the, the NOM for treatment and recovery for women's will be, of course, abstinence. And if you want to track housing or uh, recovery supports any other way in there, that's fine. But I encourage you, while the system is new, to stick with one NOM so that you can move forward and learn the system. Thank you. Uh, Matthew showed us uh, an existing application, uh, but could you kind of run through just the basics on how you create a new one for 17? You know, do you have to name it, or will it have a drop down for the things you've already been awarded allocations for or that have existed in the past? Will you guys assign the number to it? And how do you start a new application? So tell me what agency you're with. Uh, Mary Haven, Women's Program. All right, so Mary Haven's application would be in there. Hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, I, my train was slow to get here. Um, um, so behind the scenes, all project leads had to create the application. So for you, Steve, you would go in there, and it would look like OGA 2.0. So you will know. So you, when you go in, you, you will have the feel of it, and you'll be able to go through the flow more easily than, than someone new to the system. So you will not have to start. Um, it will be a new application because it's a continuation, continuating year, just like you've done in OGA. But you'll be able to flow through it pretty much the same. The grant number will already be in there. Yes. Okay. Once you It'll use already your, populate a lot of the general information. Once you use your email address as your username to get in, the rest should be cake. Yes, sir. Good job. Good. So oh, something wait, to can note. Wait, can we, can we hear that one more time? <laughs> <laughs> something to note on the face page, on the face sheet page, you will see, where's it at? Application number. Your grant number, once you submit your application number, that becomes the grant number for that funding for the year. So we understand that these are going to look foreign because they're not um, the same convention as they had been in the past. So that's just something to note, that that application number, the system auto-generates that once you go in, and then when you get to the end and you do the submit, that actually becomes your grant number. Um, so I'm new to this, so I'm not sure if this is like a correct question. But so you guys are saying I'm I'm prevention. So one nom um, and one objective. Does it not increase our likelihood to get additional grant funds to do more noms to show that we are doing a lot, or is it just funding is not based on if you choose more than one nom? Okay, <laughs> that was a good question. Um, the face sheet. Do we have to complete that even if we get our money through the board? Because last year we didn't have to. Okay, so everybody has to complete the face sheet this year. Okay, thank you. Coming. Will we still be able to upload pictures and success stories for prevention? 
currently the reporting section is still under development, so um, that is something we will consider on adding to the reports again. A question. Um, Shemaine. <laughs> so, so currently our SAPT dollars for prevention for drug-free community coalitions um, goes through the board to us. Will that be um, direct now? If you're currently receiving it as a pass-through, you will still receive it as a pass-through. Okay. Based, um, if you take a look at the GIFA, if it has a 99, you're direct funded. If it's the board number, it's a pass-through. On the uh, line item budget, did I understand you correctly to say that the other column in the narrative does not have to be completed? That is correct. That's optional. So just the MHAS and the narrative is the only two columns. So this may have been on the old systems, I'm not sure. I was wondering if you may be able to call out just an example or two of the community assessment tools that, will, are those like pre-selected that are pretty standard that we'll already be familiar with? And I'm kind of asking about treatment and prevention if that matters. Um, yes, we pre-populated several in the system already, but it's also another tab for you to create your own. And an example would be the community plan that your board uh, creates. There's a question here in the middle, Joyce. She's coming down. We serve multiple counties. We're a multiple, our board serves multiple counties as well. Uh, which community plan, which ca uh, county community plan do we use in a multiple county board situation? I would say the one relative to the project you're working on. So if your project, if you're a women's uh, project and you're a multiple uh, county board area, you can tell me all because you're open to all. But if you're a multiple county and you're only serving one county, uh, then you would tell me about the community plan portion of that or to that county, relevant to that county. Yeah. Uploading that information. So take what's going to benefit you. So as everybody's thinking about their next round of questions, let me give you a little more detail. We are working on a very detailed PowerPoint that goes step by step with general screen by screen, um, data field by data field instructions. Now. That's not to say that that's going to answer every single one of your questions, because some of these questions are very funding-related specific. So the instructions we're putting out on the web will be, here's how you walk through the system, here's the types of data fields, you know, like on the line on a budget page, don't put zeros in blank fields. So that's the kind of information that we can provide across the board to everybody. And that PowerPoint will be posted on the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services website under that funding tab um, in that grant, what's that, grant support, grant guidance um, tab underneath that, along with an extremely technical detailed user guide. Um, and then any other resource information um, that we come across that we think will be helpful and useful to you, um, that information will, will, hope, will definitely be um, available in some format on the website as the system comes up and goes live. So you're not out there on your own, you know, trying to remember, you know, trying to struggle through the notes you made here sitting in kind of a dark room. Um, we're not going to leave you hanging. We're, we're going to be here to support you through the whole process. Having said that, any more questions? I see one back here. My name, my name is Erlinda Baranda. I have worked with the Department of Rehab and Corrections for 26 years. And for four months, I associated myself as a program coordinator with MAS, Department of Health, Mental Health and Addiction Services. I am from the Philippines, 
originally. I'm a medical doctor. I have training in psychology and public health, Harvard. I've been in Ohio, and I just, I'm not asking a question. I would like to make a statement. I am very impressed with the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Our country nationwide is trying to address a lot of mental issues, including ingrown terrorism, opiate addiction, overdoses, a lot of our heroes in the sports, in the music field, so many are addicted to substances, illegal substances. And I am glad to be in this August Hall to hear all of this. This is wonderful. This is what makes America great. Thank you for all the information you have shared. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. for your support. I really appreciate those kind words. Thank you. Your check is in the mail. <laughs> Just teasing. All right, don't be shy. Come on, any more questions? Or if you would like to just turn in your half sheet so we can get those part of the FAQs, that'd be great too. You want to pass those down? If you don't pass them down, then feel free to leave them on the table outside the door on your way out. We greatly appreciate you coming. We look forward to any feedback you have. And again, if you, need any more, if you have any other questions or need further support, please contact your project leads. Thank you. The invoice, yes, we'll 